Hello everybody, in today's video we're going to be going over the upcoming pattern. We're going to have warmer temperatures in the northern and western part of the country, and then over the southeast and the southern plains we're going to have some colder temperatures. We're also going to be going over uh, the hurricane outlook over the next about two weeks, and uh, also whatever we could get from some drought relief. We'll have a little bit of rain uh, in parts of the southwest, which should help to ease up those drought issues, and then we're also going to be uh, quickly covering the severe storms in the central and northern plains so we have a lot to get through in today's video so let's get right into it here with your current national weather service page as you can see we have excessive heat warnings in effect for much of the uh, pacific northwest we have red flag warnings in that pink color which covers uh, the western u.s as a whole we have some heat advisories in that orange color for parts of nebraska texas and uh, new mexico but other than that we don't have many other watches or warnings currently in place Yesterday, we had a high temperature of 117 degrees tied between Death Valley, California and Stovepipe Wells, California. Uh, Leota, uh, Michigan got down to 27 degrees Fahrenheit yesterday, so that was the national low temperature. And the highest rainfall report was in New Orleans, Louisiana, where they got 4.17 inches of rainfall. There were no snowfall reports as of yesterday. So taking a look at what the temperature pattern is going to look like, we're going to start off with this and then we're going to transition into the severe weather and hurricane and the drought relief that we'll be getting. You can see that we're starting off with a fairly warm pattern, especially in the northwest and also into the central plains with some chillier temperatures along the east coast and also into the southwest. So as we go through into Friday, you're going to start to see that that colder air starts to move a little bit further uh, to the east. So uh, by the later part of this week, it will still kind of be all over the place where we'll have kind of patches of cold air and patches of warm air here and there. Nothing too defined. As we get into next week, that's when we're going to start to get more defined patterns where we're going to have defined ridges and defi uh, defined troughs uh, throughout the atmosphere. So you're going to start to see that this area of cold air, which is currently by this point in the Rockies, is going to continue to head to the east and it will eventually overtake the eastern United States and become the main area of colder weather in that area uh, and then we're going to start to see a little bit more of a ridge build in uh, over the northwest uh, part of the country and even into parts of western Canada as well so that area of high pressure and warmer air will continue to build a little bit more. Uh, if we go to Saturday, you can see that we have still those warmer than normal temperatures out through the western United States with below normal temperatures into the central plains and the southeast. But again, it is still kind of all over the place uh, here with the temperature pattern. If we go to Sunday of this week, you can still see some of those colder temperatures in through the central uh, part of the country and even into the southeast. We have a little bit of warmer air into the northeast and along the west coast where we're dealing with temperatures that are going to be closer to 30 degrees Fahrenheit above normal, 20 degrees Celsius above normal. So really warm temperatures here uh, into parts of the northwest uh into the parts of the northwest and also uh, into areas like british columbia and alberta and canada so uh, we're dealing with a fairly warm pattern especially out to the west and especially as you get further north uh, as well but it's going to be into the central plains and also into the southeast where we're dealing with those colder and chillier than normal temperatures which by this time of year again it is going to probably feel a lot better than if it was below normal in january just because instead of dealing with temperatures down into the teens the 20s and the 30s you're actually dealing with temperatures that are going to be fairly comfortable into the 70s and the low 80s so instead of dealing with that very uh, uncomfortable summer heat you're actually going to get more of those nice April or early May type of temperatures instead of the uh, July or August heat that we would typically be dealing with uh, this time of year. So it will actually be a little bit more pleasant than any other time of year if you were to get below normal temperatures. If we look at for Monday, so starting off the work week next week, you can see that we still have above normal temperatures into the northeast and also throughout the west. We have some of those below normal temperatures in through the central plains and uh, the southeast still. And now you're going to start to see more of a defined pattern. We're going to see a little bit of ridging build over the top of this area of low pressure and colder air. Uh, so you're starting to see that this area of below normal temperatures it's continuing to sink very slowly further to the south and you're now starting to see a little bit of warm air kind of nudging in between here into the northern plains and the great lakes eventually this area will uh, become above normal in terms of temperatures so it will be a little bit warmer than normal in those areas 
Here would be by Wednesday, and you can see it's still below normal over much of the southeast and the southern and central plains, warmer than normal in the northwest and uh, the northeast. If we look at the 6 to 10 day outlook, which is from the 28th through the 2nd of July, you can see that we have above normal temperatures all throughout the west, especially in the northwest, uh, and then another pocket there into the northeast. And then we have below normal temperatures, which are for uh, much of the southeast, southern, and central plains as well, and even into parts of uh, the southern Rockies as well. So that would be from uh, June 28th through July 2nd. If we look at from uh, June 30th through July 6th, you can see that we still have a fairly similar pattern. Uh, we have below normal temperatures into the southeast, the Tennessee Valley, and the central and southern plains. And then we have above normal temperatures uh, over much of the west, into the northern plains, the Great Lakes, and also uh, into the northeast. And again, that would be going through the 6th of July. Here would be the three to four week outlook, which goes from June 3rd or July 3rd uh, until July 16th. And you can see that we're still dealing with above normal temperatures expected, especially uh, in through the inner mountain west and also into the northeast. So these are the two areas that I'm expecting the most above normal temperatures. We could be dealing with still below normal temperatures along the Gulf Coast and southeast, uh, however. So that, that really didn't change there. Uh, we're still expecting a little bit of below normal temperatures in through the south, and then you go further to the the north and it gets a little bit warmer here to be the precipitation totals and kind of shifting over to another topic with the drought relief that is much needed over the western part of the country so especially within this area right here we need a lot of drought relief and luckily we are going into a bit of a rainier pattern uh, this is going to be some of the first big rains uh well i guess you can consider uh, consider it big for the southwest uh, right around a uh, quarter of an inch to half an inch in many of these areas especially in the higher elevations uh, where it is needed. So uh, luckily, they are getting a little bit of rainfall. Over the next seven days, the average out ensemble models are expecting right around 0.2 to 0.5 inches, especially over areas like Arizona. Uh, Nevada is more around uh, a tenth of an inch to maybe up to two tenths of an inch. Uh, Eastern California, parts of Oregon, Idaho. Uh, and then as you're getting into parts of Wyoming, Colorado, and New Mexico, those numbers start to go up. Now you're dealing with maybe half an inch to a full inch of rainfall in some of the Rockies. So that's definitely very, very beneficial in these areas. Somewhere where we really don't need a ton of rainfall, you need a little bit, but not a ton, like what we're about to get, is going to be in the Great Lakes, where we're dealing with rainfall forecast of about two to four inches uh, even two to five inches over the next uh, seven days so luckily that will be spread out over a couple of days but still uh, there really isn't any need for four inches in these areas you're about uh, about an inch or so below normal uh, from the averages right now uh, and that rain that you got this weekend uh, or uh, early this week into uh, this weekend really did help out a little bit more so we're not dealing with a ton of drought in uh, areas like Michigan Wisconsin uh, Illinois Indiana Ohio where we were dealing with a little bit of a drought, that has pretty much gone away. So that's pretty much extra uh, rainfall, although it's not going to hurt too much. It still is needed uh, over some of these areas. If we look at the 6 to 10 day outlook for precipitation or rainfall, uh, you can see this is going from the 28th through the 2nd of July. We're expecting above normal rainfall in through the southwest. And then also for the entire part of the uh, eastern half of the country, we're dealing with a well below normal precipitation in the northern plains, especially. Actually, these are the areas where we need a ton of rainfall. Probably a good two to four inch rainstorm will definitely help uh, in those areas because they are experiencing drought on par with areas like Nevada, Idaho, uh, Wyoming, Utah. So these areas are dealing with fairly significant drought especially in the northern plains because this time of year uh, usually they would get all the rainfall or most of the rainfall in the spring and now we're heading into the summer and these are rather dry months for the northern plains and that really does not help them because they needed that rainfall during the winter uh, or not the rainfall but the snowpack through the winter to melt off in the springtime uh, and they just didn't get a ton of snowfall this winter so that really didn't play out and unfortunately we're dealing with a little bit of a drought. Uh, throughout the northern plains. So hopefully we can get some rainfall up into that part of the country. Here is the uh, hurricane and the tropics forecast. So we're going to kind of uh, shift over. We have one disturbance out in the Atlantic, which is uh, just east uh, of the Caribbean here. 
we have just a 10% chance of development. It's going into a high shear uh, and very dry atmosphere uh, as it's going just north of South America. Uh, and you can see it's only at a 10% chance over the next five days of developing. There's no other storminess expected over uh, the rest of the Atlantic. Taking a look at the satellite imagery uh, as of right now, that red circle is where it's located. You can see that we do have uh, a kind of a brownish shade right over and that's signifying uh, some Saharan dust. You can also you can also see a little bit of Saharan dust just west of Africa. So that area of kind of brownish color, which is right over the center of that storm, is dry air that's helping to tear apart the system. If the system can still hold together and it can still hold up some amount of rotation, uh, if it does go south of most of the Caribbean islands and moves into this area, that's a very favorable atmosphere and a very favorable uh, environment. So if it can get through that area and if it can move into that area uh, then we could definitely see some development although it does look like it'll probably break apart uh, before that happens of course we're going to continue to cover this and I'll continue to monitor this uh, to see if anything does change in the forecast if you look at over the next two weeks uh, in terms of any development that is expected you can see that over the Atlantic from the 23rd through the 29th we're not expecting a whole lot uh, we're, we're dealing with a couple of pockets of above average rainfall but we're not dealing with any uh, tropical cyclone formation that's expected over the next over the next week or so and then over the next uh, one to two weeks you can see that still pretty much the same thing uh, over the Atlantic not to say that we won't be dealing with any storms but as of right now we don't have any signs that would point towards uh, any uh, real development and that's of course one to two weeks out so we could still see a few more storms pop up in the short range uh, and I'll definitely post videos if that does uh, end up happening taking a look at the severe weather which is going to be taking place over the central plains you can see that in parts of Nebraska, Iowa, Minnesota, Wisconsin, into a little bit of Kansas, Missouri, and Illinois as well. We have a slight risk of severe weather out, uh, and this would be for uh, Thursday, so this would be for tomorrow. You're dealing with uh, a fairly decent threat of especially wind and hail uh, in many of these areas. Here is the tornado risk, and you can see that it's mainly just 2% or lower uh, in many of these areas. So we're not dealing with a huge threat of tornadoes. Not to say that we couldn't see one or two uh, here from this severe weather event. If we look at the hail outlook, you can see it's a little bit more beefed up. So we have a 15% risk, uh, which covers the central plains. And then around that, we have that 5% risk. We also have a little 5% risk of hail in the Dakotas and Montana. So luckily they will get a little bit of rainfall out of those storms, uh, but it will be more localized, nothing on the widespread scale uh, that would be needed to really uh, resolve all those drought issues in that area. And if we look at the wind outlook, you can see not a lot has changed. It has widened up a little bit compared to the hail outlook, but still fairly similar to that hail outlook. We're expecting about a 15% chance of seeing some wind damage. Uh, so it's not a whole lot, but again, uh, I would not be surprised if we see an enhanced Enhanced risk be put out on this uh, event because it does look like we do have some of the uh, proper signs for severe weather. I might make an entire video dedicated to this event tomorrow morning that's all going to depend on how severe this actually does end up looking uh, and how um, how impactful it actually looks so uh, there is definitely a chance that I do make a full video on this uh, tomorrow that is going to wrap it up for today's video please consider liking the video subscribing and turning on notifications and I'll see you guys in the next video goodbye